What prompted the ring fencing? Why are these banks taking a different attitude to China? Yeah, it's really the heightened tensions between US and China, two biggest economies in the world, as well as the data rules in China announced since 2021, which has really cost in advance tons of millions of money just to segregate the financial data, client data, even employees' data onshore from the rest of the global operations. So the banks are also genuinely worried about the, the tensions over trade, over time. Taiwan, that could someday worsen quickly. So in some extreme cases, if China got sanctioned completely by mm. US, what will happen? So all these are endangering the bank's ability to manage their subsidiaries in China or kind of like operate those subsidiaries effectively. OK, and you sort of alluded there to some of the measures that have been put in place, some of the specifics around ring fencing. You were talking about where data is located, for example. So what are the measures that we've seen these banks putting in place? These measures are actually taken kind of slowly and Quietly, and because they are uh, sort of like come out from the behind the scenes uh, machinations and uh, deliberations uh, of the banks, uh, more standing, uh, more office when they uh, relocate the 200 software engineers from the mainland because they need to provide, uh, they need to uh, kind of uh, set up a separate uh, IT system which is completely incompatible with the global system. That's one example. We are seeing some banks already adopted using the local surveillance system, money, anti-money laundering software made in China as they continue to phase out or stop using the cloud-based foreign brand software in China. That's another example. And you will see Bands not only decouple the IT system, they will, could eventually decouple the balance sheets uh, from China and in China from the rest of the world because the data law is really um, hampering the visibility on the mainland in terms of, in terms of the risk they're taking onshore. Yes, and I know the story makes the point that one of the Wall Street banks that you've talked to uh, for this story, uh, we've actually seen them stopping briefing the head of their subsidiary in mainland China on sensitive company strategy uh, because they don't want uh, the Chinese government to eavesdrop on. On, on what's being said. Right. So what does this mean then for these Wall Street firms in China? Wall Street firms in China is no longer pursuing the China dream. The dream is sputtering. Right now what they're doing is to mitigate risk as much as they can, protect the onshore operations, protect the global reputation, minimize the risk in China, having a very rigorous and sort of like frequent risk assessment on the country's potential because given the economic stagnation there, the data laws and also the policy flip-floppings is really risk to operate China by spending a lot of money. The data regime is already costing a lot of money mm. and it's consuming a lot of their budget, which has a knock-on impact already on anything else they want to do onshore. So if you don't see visibility in a country, visibility in a country, and you will just do less of it.